Good afternoon, it's a deal for Zal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for trading session the Monday 29th of January 2018. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from uh, leading providers at www.tradesignal.com, and you can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so uh, let's see exactly where this market's positioned in terms of stats then, folks. First and foremost, as always, in terms of the Asian markets overnight, you have the uh, Chinese markets certainly higher. Uh, on the back of obviously stronger U.S. equities, uh, you have uh, the uh, the Dow and the Nasdaq and the S&P all screaming to new highs. Although the Dow Transports and the uh, Russell 2000 certainly is lagging, so bear that in mind. So the S&P broke above 28.70, which was quite impressive. I mean, just bring up the chart here. Very, very impressive. Uh, the Dow, as you can see, broke above 26,600. S&P 500 as well, certainly pushing higher. So... Again, very, very impressive move, as you can see here, breaking above that 2870 zone in the daily chart. Uh, S&P 500 is certainly very, very bullish there. Okay, so again, you one would have expected the strength, obviously, to feed through into European markets. That hasn't been the case, and there's a number of factors there. Number one, Mr. Trump certainly raising concerns, given the fact that he said that he's hinting at retaliation with regards to EU uh, trade. Okay, so again, hinting at retaliation. Also, Mr. Trump obviously has uh, has stopped the potential 5G rollout, okay, to Chinese firms or any giving any access to 5G firms by potentially nationalising it. So again, that certainly raises potential concerns with regards to a trade war versus China, which is effectively negative. We did get weaker GDP numbers out on Friday, but yet the markets totally ignore that altogether. And, and uh, S and P, Nasdaq rallied to new highs now it has been interesting in terms of viewing the equities or futures markets overnight given the fact that the nasdaq actually ripped and broke higher above 7000 all the way up to 7040 and then reversed back down below 7000 so you're having a 40 or 50 point variance move in the nasdaq at the moment so it's kind of interesting okay uh, again you'd expect the follow through in terms of european markets to go through given the fact that you asian markets are higher uh, given the fact that obviously u.s markets are higher it's just the um nikkei that's more or less closed fat Shanghai closed higher, but the Hang Seng certainly closed weaker. Now, uh, reviewing the Asian indices, this, I think this is quite important in terms of the next potential move going forward. Now, the daily chart, as you can see, of the uh, the Shanghai index here, you can see here, uh, closing down, you've got a bearish, obviously, engulfing candle. So, again, certainly something to, to, to consider as well. Okay, now, looking at the weekly chart, you can see that we are now coming into turbulence. So, again, Shanghai index certainly indicating potential weakness. So, again, watch out there. In terms of the uh, iShares World Index Fund, if I go to a weekly chart, you can see it's ripping higher. World Index Indices certainly moving higher. I just wanted to give you an insight into the emerging markets. Let's see if I can bring that up for you one second. Oh, I got the emerging markets saved here. No, uh, let, me, let me just bring up the EEM. Who used the EEM, I've been told. Okay, let's just bring this up. Okay, no, that's not the one. Um, bear with me. Okay, I'm bringing up monthly chart. Okay, so monthly chart is certainly coming into resistance, as you can see in terms of emerging markets. So, emerging markets coming into resistance, okay. Uh, the Shanghai or Chinese indices certainly coming into resistance as well. Also, in terms of Nikkei. Let's bring up the Nikkei, bear with me. There we go. Okay, so Nikkei as well, lackluster as well, so indicating weakness. So Asian markets to a large extent now are coming into resistance, emerging markets into resistance. And that basically is, is leading me to conclude that we are now looking for a potential reversal, especially with U.S. equities. I mean, if U.S. equities fail to continue their run higher, especially the Nasdaq failing to hold above 7,000, if the the S and P has already reversed from a pivot higher twenty eight seventy seven, it's reversed quite sharply, on the back of oil prices obviously moving lower on the back of supply concerns and copper certainly is under pressure as well. The Chinese and the uh, Hang, Hang, Hong Kong indices both obviously were were slightly weaker towards the close. So again, uh, they did move higher, but then they gave up those gains. So again, that certainly is a cause for concern in terms of markets. It shows that uh, uh, U S equities or should we say European equities are failing to follow through as well. On the back of Mr. Prayat's moves as well in terms of uh, QE, talking of QE there as well, so bear that in mind, that's another factor to take into account. Okay, so number one, in terms of European indices, you've got concerns with regards to end of QE, you've got concerns with regards to the trade war with, with the US, 
So those two factors certainly weighing on the sentiment as well, okay? Uh, in terms of the other factors as well, concerns over Brexit from the UK uh, going forward with regards to Theresa May. There's a legislation that's going through to the House of um, the Upper House, which again undermines her ability and uh, certainly does cast doubt on her support level as well going forward. In terms of Trump trade war, concerns with regards to EU, ECB prior, the other thing that I've missed out, UK risks higher energy prices via Brexit and German import prices certainly ri rising as well. So again, all those factors adding together, from my perspective, adding trade war versus China, uh, concerns with regards to protectionism, all indicate risk off. Okay, now let's look at the actual technical picture. Now let's start off with the German DAX first and foremost. Okay, so German DAX at the moment, holding potential support here. Again, it's screaming to close that gap below. Again, bear, bear in mind you've got concerns with regards to protect, trade, protect, trade protectionism by Trump. Your concerns with regards to hawkish uh, comments. Again, that certainly is going to expect, like, certainly is expected to weigh on the German DAX going forward. So bear that in mind as well. Looking at a 10 minute chart, we've bounced off that key support below at 12 to 1. 12275 let's see if that can hold okay in terms of the french cac let's bring up the french cac again this is something that i've been looking at in terms of the hns formation bearish uh, potential setup here looking to potentially flush down to gap fill at 5480 so again the fundamental catalyst certainly is there trade protectionism hawkish ecb those two factors certainly expected to weigh uh, and given the fact that this has failed to follow through in terms of US equities higher that's again is a negative factor so again take that into account in terms of the FTSE 100 we flushed lower down to 7665 we've held that previous resistance equal support 7660 zone we've pushed back up to gap uh, double top so again that's an impressive thrust you have to respect that for now 7665 was a good profit taking zone I should have I could have I should have taken that profit but again it's always hindsight foresight we could certainly move lower here expecting 7645 and then ideally ultimately expecting 7615 gap fill to be closed below so those two factors i'm certainly expecting going forward okay so bear that in mind in terms of the 60 minute chart on the FTSE 100 we're certainly holding that key resistance zone around the 50 percent previous support equals resistance and we're making lower lows and lower highs now the daily chart obviously has bounced off 7600 Okay, but we are now facing turbulence where previous support equals resistance, and you got that 50% retracement. So lower lows, lower highs, back down below 7600. That's what I'm expecting, especially the ongoing concerns with regards to Brexit, with regards to political uncertainty, given Theresa May's predicament, with regards to the fraud, corruption, scandal via Carillion, etc., etc. I mean, there are a lot of variables now that for is that's forcing the FTSE 100 lower. So certainly take that into account. Okay. In terms of Euro stocks, uh, Euro stocks itself, let's just quickly go to the daily chart. First of all, give you a bird's eye view. Ever since we rejected that gap level, we've certainly uh, obviously been bearish. 60 minute chart, it's just lower highs and lower lows. Now, the question is do we go back and test that 3615 and 3605? That's the question. Okay, so let's see how the market transpires here. 10 minute chart as well, looking for weakness. Okay, so again, take that into consideration too. Okay, so that's basically the status quo, okay, in terms of where the market stands at present. Uh, let's see how the market unfolds. My bias certainly remains bearish here now, given the fact that we've had Asian markets reverse holding resistance. Uh, U European markets have failed to follow through in terms of US equities to push into new highs. US equities are giving up a majority of their gains overnight, okay, so it certainly is looking like a potential reversal day, especially given the fact that US, uh, European mar US markets certainly rallied on Friday. And European markets have failed to follow through. So again, looking for risk off to dominate now, looking for a potential move lower. Please uh, ensure that you uh, certainly download that app at Trade Signal and certainly take advantage of that bonus. Goodbye.